2021. I'm excited to introduce Martin Jarman, the Ellis and Name Lehner Family Director of Athletics for his UCLA Elite keynote address. In his short tenure, Martin has had a major impact on UCLA athletics, and we're fortunate that we were able to recruit Martin to join us from Boston College in 2020. I believe Martin's keynote will be very applicable for our audience, especially the entrepreneurs, to understand the importance of culture, leadership, teamwork, and tenacity, which goes beyond science when it comes to making a major impact with translating research into new therapies. So at this time, I welcome Martin and turn it over to you. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Hello, everyone. Um, I, I love doing these Zooms, but I know a lot of us have, have spent way too much time on Zoom. So turn your camera on if you can. I'd love to do this together. Um, I feed off the energy of seeing people. So if, if I can see you, there you go, Mark. If I can see you, that's great. Um, but hopefully uh, everybody is enjoying the conference. Uh, some unbelievable speakers. And Mark has asked me to, uh, to talk about teamwork. And uh, in our world in athletics, uh, teamwork is everything. Um, Oh, and, and yes, turn your camera on if appropriate. You know, if it's not appropriate, leave it off. Trust me, we, we don't need that, but uh, turn it on if you can, and, and we'd love to see you. Uh, but uh, teamwork is very important, and I'm going to talk a little bit about teamwork, uh, the importance of teamwork, but also there, there are three questions that I want to leave you with. I'm going to start, start from the, the end to the beginning, um, and we're going to talk about elite and how do you elevate to elite? How do you elevate your mindset to an elite mindset? Uh, the second question is, what else? What else needs to be done? And the third question is, why not we? Not me, why not we? Uh, teamwork is all about working together towards a common goal. Uh, and, and the best performances, breakthroughs come through teamwork and collaborative environments. In science, we saw one of the most collaborative environments this past year working through a pandemic. Uh, and that is, that is rare. But I would, I would suggest that this is just the beginning of a new way of collaborating and working together for one common goal. Obviously, the goal, develop therapeutics, but also to, to meet unmet medical needs and foster an environment that creates collaboration, teamwork to help us get there together. So elite, elite is a mindset. This is what we say in athletics, in our athletics program, but it's energy, leadership, integrity, toughness, and excellence. That is elite. And again, it's a mindset. It's when you wake up every day, what drives you, what motivates you? You've got to have energy. That's passion for what you do. And I know all of you have that. You are changing the world and changing people's lives. And you have to have an enthusiasm and an energy and a passion to do the work that needs to be done. Leadership, it starts with us. It's how we go about our business and we lead ourselves before we can lead others. Integrity going to always do it the right way. That's a non-negotiable, especially in your world in medicine and science. That's what the world relies on, to do it above board and make sure we do everything we can to do it the proper way. Toughness. This is a big one, especially in your world. You've got to have grit. Sometimes you just got to see it through. You've got to hold on. A lot of people say sometimes that you know, 90% of success is, is, is showing up. I believe 90% is holding on to that rope when others are letting go. You got to have a level of toughness and grit to have the success or the desired result that you need. Um, it's not easy. Success is not easy. Greatness is not easy. Breakthroughs, scientific, not easy. It's hard because if it was easy, as we've all heard, everybody could do it. But you have to have that toughness to see things through. Uh, especially entrepreneurs, you, you fall and you get back up and you have that, that mental fortitude and that grit to keep going. And the final one is excellence. We want to be great. That's what UCLA prides ourselves in our athletics program. 
there's a level, a standard that we must meet and exceed. And that is excellence. That's what we expect out of ourselves. So that's the elite mindset, energy, leadership, integrity, toughness, and excellence. So let's talk about teamwork. At the core of teamwork is relationships. You must develop and build relationships. Nothing happens by ourselves. You know, it's not one person that develops that therapeutic, that drug. It is a team. You may hear a name or two behind something or a breakthrough. But what you don't hear about is the team and collaborative efforts that go into that. You don't hear about the lab technicians. You don't hear about uh, the, the people doing the clinical trials. You don't hear about the sponsors, the angel investors, the, the, all the, the community, the students, the people that go behind and do the work to help have those successes and breakthroughs. And in our world, in, in athletics especially, you don't accomplish anything alone. So in order to have a great teamwork and great, great frame of mind, as far as working together, it's relationships. Relationships are built. It takes time. I like to say, what anything you think about that you love, anything that you love, that you're passionate about, it takes time. I sometimes say the best way to spell love, how do you spell love? Most of you would say L-O-V-E. I say it's T-I-M-E. Because if you love something, you give it the time that is needed to water it, to nurture it, to help it grow and develop into something great beyond ourselves. We always want to be a part of something that is greater than us. And in your world, especially creating that collaborative environment, having that teamwork approach, having that elite mindset allows us to work together, not as individuals, but collectively together as a team to accomplish a goal. That is really important. This past year, we saw some of the most collaborative partnerships that we've ever seen. I read something, uh, and I, I don't know if this is totally true, but I thought I read something about Pfizer and Moderna working together, coming together, pouring billions of dollars into a collective joint effort without paperwork, without an agreement, without a contract because they understood that it took a collaborative environment to meet an uh, unmet need and to have one goal, that we're gonna change lives and help save our world the way that we best know how, and that's working together to fight. That's what we need now. We need to move forward. But a lot of times we think, well, that's them. How do I do what I can to have elite mindset? How do I do what I can to take theory, thought into action. Glad you asked, or I'm glad you're wondering about that. It all starts with us and it starts small. You have to take small steps. But, but the one thing that I want you to remember is we must collaborate and see us as a part of a greater good together rather than individuals. And how do you do that? When you think about the work that you do, I like to ask, what else? What else can be done? And that work that needs to be done, why not we? Not why not me? Why not we? Who can you work with right now? Who can you collaborate with right now? Who can you pick up a phone? Who can you start to develop a relationship built on trust, connectivity, shared common goal to work together for the greater good? We all can do that. We all get in our silos at times, right? But it takes, it takes more. It takes an elite mindset going above and beyond what you may believe you're capable of, especially when it comes to teamwork, to accomplish the goals and successes that we need in the world of science, development therapeutics, and it takes a team. It's not just the, the person you read about. Right. There's a whole team. of You guys know that there's a whole team of people behind that. And it's now time to recognize that and build on that. We have an opportunity right now, an opportunity based on this past year and going through this global pandemic together to really change the way in the future of how we work together. This is an opportunity that doesn't come often. 
through pain, through struggle, you have to see hope and opportunity. And in, in our world, this is the time to come together, create that collaborative environment. Because if you don't have trust, if you don't build relationships, if you don't spend the time, if you love it, you spend the time. If you don't do that now, we're not going to be able to meet the needs that people have all over the world. And you do some of the most, if not the most important work. You save lives. I work in, I work in athletics. It's about games, right? At the end of the day, it's, it's wins and losses and fun, but it's games. It's not a game what you do. It's not a game. But the level of teamwork, cohesiveness, co togetherness has got to be that same level. Because that's the only way that we're going to move forward and have the kind of breakthroughs and opportunities and responsiveness that we just witnessed this past year. Incredible. Incredible. I don't know if I've ever seen something like this in my lifetime. But I do know that this is not the last challenge we're going to have. I do know that the work that's being done now is really important. And for it to take that next step, especially people coming behind us in your field, they're going to expect a collaborative environment. They're going to expect relationship building. They're going to expect trust. They're going to, that's the way it is. That's where it's going. You've got to go where the puck is going. That's a hockey analogy. I got to keep it back to athletics a little bit. But you got to go where the puck is going. Skate to the puck is going. And so that's the one thing that I, I think with an elite mindset, energy, leadership, integrity, toughness, excellence. Why not we? What else can be done together? Take the time, work with each other, provide that collaborative teamwork environment. We all can do that. We all contribute to that. What's something I can do? I can call somebody or reach out to someone right now to get their thoughts on what I'm doing, to get their input, to listen, to be open. And maybe instead of thinking about me, I think about we. Everybody can do that. We all can do that. That's the challenge that is upon us. Mark, I'm going to pause there. I don't know if there were any questions, but I thought this might be a good time to pause. Sure. You know, um, um, I was wondering, success begets success. Could you explain how that, you know, that team mentality of taking that first step with the trust then leads to a successful team, the dynasties, because you also see that in drug development, serial entrepreneurs who, after they've established the team, their second, third, fourth, you know, companies, drug development are easier because they've established that trust in team. Yes. I mean, it, everything is trust. And, and again, it takes time. But what you see in teams, the most successful teams, first of all, they, they work for a common purpose and a common goal. Very similar. Very similar. It's a common goal, common purpose. And then the approach is selfless, meaning I want to be a part. I am willing to sacrifice. Success is to sacrifice. Make no mistake. Anyone who experiences success at a high level, any team that experiences it, has a high level of sacrifice. And again, that's where I talk about the we versus me. Successful teams are willing collectively to sacrifice for the greater good to provide a harmonious environment to reach their shared goal. So you see that in teams. You saw that in, in college basketball this year with the Bruins. Um, our men's basketball team went to the final four. The team that you saw at the end of the regular season was different than the team that you saw in the postseason. Because collectively, they moved as one. They worked together. They had a shared sacrifice. And they gave of themselves in a way that they were able to achieve success and build on that. The beauty of success is momentum. Momentum is fuel for positive outcomes. You've got to focus on building momentum. And that's where you talk about the serial entrepreneurs. Once you see, it's like in basketball, once you see the ball go in the net, it's easier to see that second one and then to actualize that third one. That's the same way. You've got to have success, but you've got to build momentum. 
And you don't build momentum with big things. It's small things. That's where it starts. So building momentum, having a collaborative environment, shared sacrifice, success, great success, great sacrifice. You can't have it any other way. There's, there, there's no other way to do it. Um, anything great that's been accomplished, it wasn't without significant sacrifice. And that helps you go into the we, not me mindset and the egoless approach. So, Mori, I have a, a practical question for you. When, how did you uh, think or how did you execute building your teams and connecting with your coaches during COVID when you couldn't go and do practices or meet your players in person? How did that all kind of climax in the final four, right? But, but for a very long period of time, you had to do everything remotely. Unbelievable challenge. That's a great question. Um, you have to meet people where they are. And again, this goes back into the teamwork and building trust. So you have to meet people where they are. And during this pandemic, everyone felt a, a significant sense of isolation. So from my perspective, I always thought about and continue to think about how are ways that I can improve the connectivity amongst our teams, amongst our coaches, amongst our staffs? How do I connect? It's all about connectivity because, again, we all have a common goal. We want to be done with this, right? But, but we're also we're isolated, and so we want to come together. So, so how you build that and meeting people where they are is you think of ways uh, that, that does just that. So, so student-athletes, for example, um, they're very connected on social media. They're always on this. Everybody knows that. A lot of us are always on this. And so one of the ways that I tried to do that was being very – um, very engaged on social media at events, at basketball games, showing energy. And I did that for two reasons. One, to show our student athletes and coaches, I support them. I love you. I'm here with you. Uh, I, I understand as much as I can, but what I do understand is support and love and care. And so I try to show that at games. And then also to our fans, I wanted them to feel a sense of connectivity to what's going on at this basketball tournament, what's going on in this game. I wanted to take this experience and bring it to you so you felt a part of it. So there was a shared communal experience of cheering on our Bruins. And also to remind you what it's like to come to games because I'm going to need you to come to games next year. I'm going to need you to buy tickets next year. So there was always a focus with, with how I engage in social media, but also to remind people to stay connected and remind people that this, this time we're living in is not normal. We're going to get back to normal. And when we do, we need you. We need to all be locked in and connected. Again, shared experience, common goal, sacrifice for the greater good. Well, I, I think I wanted to ask, oh, I think I wanted to ask a question along those lines. Um, I think we all have an idea that we want to get to an end goal. We all want the pandemic to be over. We all want to win the game. We all want to win the tournament. Um, but as you said, trust is what you need. And, you know, journey of a thousand miles with a single step kind of thing. What are techniques that you use in order to build trust on small scales in order to get to those larger goals? Great question. Uh, so you, you have to start with yourself, I believe. So, um, how do you build trust, small steps, before you can get to the bigger goal? Is that, Daniel, is that characterizing kind of what you're asking? So, so it, again, it starts with, with you. People need to be able to count on you first. So before people can count on you, you've got to count on yourself. You have to be reliable, predictable. Um, and, and, and so that starts to me with a routine. Again, it's small steps starts with you. What's your routine? What helps you get in the best mindset, that elite mindset that helps you do the best work that you can do? That's what I, I would challenge everyone to do because what the pandemic has also done is thrown all of us off of our routines. So one of the first things you have to do is recapture a routine that puts you in the best mind, spirit, ability to do the best work you can do. Because that's what your teammates want of you. That's what your employer wants of you. That's what your staff wants of you. It's your best. So how do I give my best? 
how do I, how am I reliable, predictable to where I can now build that trust because someone knows they can count on me. Again, starts with me. So, so, so you've got to find that for me, it's working out in the morning. For example, I had to get back on a routine where I'm working out or, or having some kind of movement early in the morning that helps get me going. That helps get me in a best mindset. And then you've got to, you've got to be reliable. If you say you're going to do something, you've got to do it. You know, and if you, and if you can't, you need to say my bad, my mistake, I, I'm not going to be able to, um, that's important. So so when you can depend on yourself or people can depend on you, then you can ask the same thing. One of the biggest ways to build trust is to understand reciprocity. If I see the good in you, Daniel, if I see your good intentions, if I assume good intention, you're going to assume good intention with me. We, We need to make sure that we think about the law of reciprocity with how we treat our our coworkers, our teammates, our staff. If I think you're giving your best, Daniel, if I think you're coming to the meeting um, in a collaborative uh, feeling and mood and spirit, then you're going to think the same thing about me. And now we're going to get one step closer to, to building that trust and being able to rely on each other and wanting to go with each other and connect. That's where it starts. So I would say reciprocity, good intention, starts with yourself, routine, what puts you in the best mindset to do your best work. That's what you've got to do because that's what we depend on. I don't want Daniel at 50%. I want him at 100%, maybe 110%. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm an energy guy. I'm a passionate guy. I want more of you, Daniel. I want more of you, Greg. I want more of you. Let's see, is that Natalie? I want more. Yeah. What's going to help you give me more? Starts with us. Could I ask you a question, Martin? Yes, Dr. Titel, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? <laughs> nice to see you. So uh, on the sports teams that you're involved in or on the science teams that we're involved with, uh, there's always uh, alphas. There's always people who are the prime guys and there's always people who have to support the mission of the team. So how do you get the best out of everyone when everyone has a role and you can't always be the alpha? That happens when you go from high school to college and, and teams. Usually the high school student athletes were the best on their team, and then they come to college, and it's it's a rude awakening. You, you realize everybody's fast, everybody's talented, everybody's skilled. So again, it starts with a common goal. As a leader, you have to foster and, and really establish what is the common goal that we want to achieve. You got to lay it out. Because once you establish a common goal, whether it's developing therapeutics, whether it's meeting uh, a, a medical need that's unmet, whether it's winning a championship, if we can establish a common goal, then we can start to understand what are the sacrifices needed to have success. It's about sacrifice, but it's about understanding what the goal. I can't sacrifice my skills or my talents or abilities. I can't sacrifice if I don't understand what the bigger picture is, what the common goal is. Because I may be better than you, Mike, at certain things, but I may not be willing to give that up because, because of who I am. But I'm willing to do that if I understand you and I have a shared sense of purpose, a shared sense of focus, then it's a little easier to sacrifice. So again, when you ask the question, how do you get, we're all, we're all different skills and talents and, and, and levels. We have to establish the common purpose, the, 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 the thread, right, that goes through that the common goal, and then it becomes easier to collaborate and sacrifice. What can I give more of? What do I need to, to, to maybe not emphasize as much? That's, that's what teamwork is about. That's really what it is. Because you, you're not going to get everyone's best unless you understand that there's a common focus that we're trying to be greater than the sum of our, our parts. That's what it's about. It starts there. Martin, could you um, elaborate on your your path with mentorship? Because coming from UNC uh, Wilmington to where your role is now, one thing that's a challenge and actually it's a theme with this event is that scientists building those relationships and asking for mentors is, you know, it's a different 
different animal for lack of a better word, but, but understanding your path and mentors would be really um, inspirational. So I, I'll, I'll speak to being a mentee and then a mentor. Cause I'm, I'm still, I'm still young enough and old enough that I've, I've, I still dabble in both worlds, right? I, I still have some great mentors um, and I'm still a, a, a mentee and, and, and people reach out. So, so mentors are, are significantly important to your growth and develop, development as a professional. Uh, to those that are more seasoned, I won't say older, I'll say more seasoned, you have to understand the sense of responsibility you have to the profession and business to develop and help those that are coming behind you. There's no other way to put it. If you have had success or a level of experience that many may not have, it's your responsibility to the profession to help those who are coming behind you. Notice I said it's responsibility. And I wanna even say it's a privilege because chances are someone, someone's helped you along the way. That said, the, the, the best way to me that you can lead and be an example to where people want you to mentor them is to be great at what you do and do it excellently. So that means you can't be all things to all people. I say no more now than I say yes as far as taking on mentoring relationships because I don't have the time to do what I'm called to do. And that's helped UCLA go from, from where we are to elite. So I would tell you to be mindful and selective to those relationships. You have a responsibility. It's a privilege, but you have that responsibility to, to do that. And then I would say for those that are wanting mentors, a lot of times I see young people, and I don't know if this is this way with, with scientists or young entrepreneurs, but I see young people try to reach out to so many people. And if you reach out to eight people and you get, you know, one response, you reach out to another eight people. I, I really think you should focus on two or three people that you have something in common with. Start there. Who are two or three people that I aspire to in this business, in this profession, that have something in common with me? That to me is usually a better way to get the, the connection and, and develop a relationship. Maybe we're from the same hometown. Maybe we um, share some kind of experience. We went to a conference together. We did this. Whatever it is, just try to find a link. And to me, that's important to help you establish a mentor and relationship. But I, will, I would also say to, to mentees, you can't, you can't spend your time trying to develop relationships with people that don't want to do it. You just got to move on. There's so many great and talented people out there. Just because it doesn't work with one or two doesn't mean it can't work with someone that's really going to help you and, and help you grow and develop and learn. I think, I think we had an interesting question from, from the audience. Uh, it was about when do you ever give up? If you give up on a team, when you say, oh, this team is not working, I need to restructure it. Oof. That one, it depends on the context. Um, you know, I, I would say trust your gut. You know, in your gut, in your heart, you know if something's not going to work or not. I, I firmly believe that if, you, if you're connected to a team the way that you should be, you have a good sense of, of when it's time to retool, rethink, redistribute. Um, that's, that's, that's something you got to have a feel for. And the only way you can have that feel for is you got to be close to it. I say, you got to get in the weeds. You got to understand what is going on with the team. You got to understand the dynamics. And again, the only way to understand that is you have to spend time with everybody on the team. You've got to spend time with your colleagues and people you're working with. There's no other way to do it because once you spend the time, then you have a better sense of where the team can go. And if our goals are in alignment, because the reality is, if our, if our goals and our objectives are not in alignment, it's done. So that's, so that's the simple answer. When do, you, when do you decide the team's not working or you got to do something different, think differently? When you realize the goals and objectives are not in alignment with everybody on the team, then it's time to change. And I have a, I have a theory uh, on, on things like that, especially big big change or, or challenging things that you have to do sometimes, 
I'd rather leave the party early than stay too late. I'd rather break up the team and retool a little, a little sooner than, than, than maybe I needed to than wait when it's too late. Cause that is more damaging and that takes longer to build the relationships and trust that you need to again, reach that common goal uh, and that shared experience. You want to be early than late. Well, unfortunately, we have to end the, your keynote address. No, no. I know. <laughs> but Friday's open, so we can <laughs> reschedule. Let's run it know, back. This, Yeah, no, words escape. This was great, Martin. I mean, energetic, inspirational. And again, it's just, it's such a great compliment and just really demonstrates how there is a common theme between different avenues of progress, you know, pursuits in life, whether it's drug development, sports, things like that. And um, I know Vaz is on here, but go, you go Bruins, go UCLA. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Um, yeah. Thanks, Martin. And, this uh, is fun. <laughs>